Coucou tout le monde, c'est Capette de Coin Academy. Aujourd'hui, interview avec Coinbase. Ça va être une interview plutôt sur des sujets spécifiques à la tech. On va parler avec Yehuda Hindel, qui est Head of Cryptography pour Coinbase. Ça va se passer en anglais. C'est parti. Yehuda, how are you today? I'm good, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Ok, so, excusez-nous pour la, la petite panne technique comme ça. On va faire comme ceci et ça va parfaitement le faire. Donc aujourd'hui, il va nous parler un petit peu de son parcours. Yehuda, you work for Coinbase at the Head of Cryptography. Can you give us a little your background and what do you do since when you work for Coinbase? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my background is actually a purely academic background. I'm professor of computer science. I've been researching cryptography since 1998. So relatively uh, a, a long time. Uh, I joined Coinbase a year and a half ago as part of an acquisition of Unbound Security, which is a company that I co-founded that uses MPC in order to protect cryptographic keys, which is, of course, very relevant to the cryptocurrency and blockchain space where everything is based on cryptographic keys. Yeah. So when you mean keys for the users that listen to us, it's more like the accounts, the funds. So can you explain us very quickly what is MPC and how can we use it? Yeah. So uh, as you said, keys and funds and accounts are all essentially the same thing in, in, in the cryptocurrency space. Basically, uh, what prevents you from taking my money or who says that this uh, uh, money actually belongs to me? I have a secret value and I use that secret value to digitally sign in a cryptographic process and nobody can forge that. That's the underlying security that we use. So that secret is really, really valuable. If someone steals that secret, then I've lost all of our money. Or if someone's able to use my key without my permission, then I've lost all of our money. And historically, there have been many ways to try and protect those keys in hardware, uh, but they're difficult to scale and they're problematic for users, especially when we want to go en masse. We want to have these uh, technology being used by everyone, not, not techno technical experts only. And um, what MPC enables you to do is to reduce risk. So this, the naive thing I can do is yeah, I take my mobile, I install a wallet, and I have the key in my mobile. But a mobile is incredibly insecure. Mm. If I have $10 there, who cares? If I have a million euros there, <laughs> it's a, a little bit more of a concern. So with MPC, I can take that, that secret key, that secret, and I can split it into two or three or even more pieces. And MPC guarantees that you can only sign if you get the approval from those different pe people holding those pieces. So for example, in, in Coinbase's wallet as a service, we use this by having one piece on the user's device and one piece at, at Coinbase. Now Coinbase can't sign without the user. Mm. So it's not a custodian solution. It's, a, it's an end user wallet, they have custody because Coinbase can't sign. But the user also can't sign without Coinbase. So if you wanted to steal my key, you'd have to break into both Coinbase and into my mobile. And this enables you to make things much more simple and much more usable as well. Think about one of the biggest problems today with installing a wallet is you get this mnemonic. And then you get this message saying, if you forget this mnemonic, you'll, use it, you'll, you'll lose your money forever. And I'm going to say, one second, my bank doesn't tell me that. My bank tells me if I forget my password, I can reset it. Mm. I want that sort of experience. That's also what the exchange experience gives you, but people want self-custody. So how can we bridge that? And MPC enables you to exactly do that because... On the one hand, I hold my key in the sense that Coinbase alone can't do it without me. But on the other hand, I only have a share that if somebody steals, it's completely meaningless without Coinbase. So I still need to authenticate to Coinbase just like I would to an exchange, but I'm not actually giving up control. And that's the beauty of this technology. Thank you very much. And how is it different from uh, multi-signature? Because in both sides, you need multiple action to do something. But why is it better from your point of view? Yeah, so multi-sig actually feels similar because I can define I want to have five secrets of five keys and three out of five need to sign. The problem is that multi-sig is uh, very not flexible mm. in the sense that firstly, it's expensive. Uh, the, the more complex I have, you know, three of five is more expensive than two of three. And if in an, in an institutional setting, I might want to have four of 20 and I want to have people come and go, I might want to change the number of keys. And multi-sig is very rigid. I define a certain number of keys. I can't change them. And uh, if I do want to change them, I have to actually change on chain. I have to transfer funds. And not every chain supports. So Bitcoin supports, supports multi-sig, but you pay additional fees for it. Um, Ethereum, you need to use a smart contract, which is also going to be more expensive. MPC generates a standard single signature, so it works with every blockchain, and it's completely agnostic to the blockchain. And you can set up very complex systems as well. For example, you could have 
three out of three servers inside your organization and five out of 20 of a set of admins that need to approve an operation. And you can do that. You just get a standard signature that looks to the outside world like a regular signature. And it is a regular signature, but it was just it was generated in this distributed way. So it gives you much more flexibility, much more power. You can refresh the sharing of the keys over time. Uh, you can change the structure and it supports all blockchains. Okay, so from your point of view, it will be the new standard. I mean, people will stop using the old way, the menomic, etc., to move to MPC. Uh, is it difficult for someone to use it, to put it in place, I should say? So I, I think in terms of the, the, it is becoming a standard MPC wallets and, and using MPC in this space is becoming more and more popular. Uh, there are many solutions out there that there is, or many organizations looking at using it. Um, but I, I don't like to think of it as a replacement. I like to think that we have multi-sig, we have MPC, we have hardware wallets, we have cold storage. There are many different uh, technologies which are there to protect keys. And different use cases will, will make sense for different technologies. And also they can be incorporated. For example, I can have a multi-sig, which is one out of two, or sorry, two out of two, mm -hmm. two out of two multi-sig. One is a hardware wallet, and the other is an MPC wallet, which is split amongst many parties. So you can get defense in depth by combining multi-sig with hardware and with MPC, and you can get a much, much better solution. So I don't consider it to be in this or that. In terms of complexity, uh, For the user, it's very simple, it's transparent. In that sense, it's fantastic. On the technical side underneath, yes, it requires expertise. This is, uh, you know, MPC has been studied in academia since the mid to late 80s. Uh, there have been thousands of research papers written about it. We have a very good understanding of the theory uh, of MPC and there's a lot of applied research happening now as well in academia and also in industry. But you, you do, it does require expertise to know how to deploy it correctly. Uh, Coinbase, we have a team of five people, all PhDs, working on this. So we have a very strong team with decades of experience in the field to make sure that it's done correctly. Uh, there are other organizations that also have good cryptographic expertise. And there are some that have less. So I think when you choose who your vendor is, you want to make sure in general that really the technology is very strong. We're dealing, I always say that we're dealing with people's money here. This is not, you know, a theoretical concept. People put their pension funds, their college savings for their kids, not if they're in Europe or Israel, because we don't pay for university very much, but in the US, where it costs a fortune, you're saving for many years. We're protecting real people's money. And we want to make sure that it's safe. And if we have to do everything possible to, to do that. Yeah. Thank you for all the details. And now what are the next big steps for Coinbase around maybe MPC, spread the world? So yeah, I think Coinbase is leading uh, in, in this sense where uh, we have a strategy to bring MPC to all of our key management systems across all of our products. Again, not necessarily in an exclusive way. It can be MPC combined with other elements as well. We've started with Wallet as a Service. That is something which has already been released. As time goes on over the coming months and years, you will hear more and more uh, about MPC being integrated across the board. We've also released a white paper, which I talked about yesterday at the conference, uh, that has all of the details. We're very much in favor of transparency. And not only that, we want the world to know what we've done. And if it's something which is beneficial for others, we want them to use it as well. Because everybody being secure in this space is best for everyone. We don't, any, we, we don't want anyone to be hacked. It's not good for us. It's not good for anyone. Uh, so yes, we very much plan on, on uh, leading and, and educating and helping everybody get better and better. Okay. And how can we follow this work around MPC? Do you have a, a GitHub, a social network or whatever? So we have announcements coming out of Coinbase. There's uh, there are blog posts. There uh, the white paper is has has been announced. Uh, we're looking uh, hopefully at open sourcing. It's not something which has been finalized yet in terms of timeline. It's something that we certainly want to do. And uh, when we do that, that will also I think be another very big step for helping the larger community. Yeah. Thank you for everything. I will put in the description of the video the white paper if you want to check it. Thank you for your time. And uh, if you like this video, make sure to put a like, a comment and see you next time. Bye.